Slide 25. All right, common urinary studies. <clears throat> so to understand what's going on uh, with a urinary elimination, you know, you've got the physical signs of the patient. You've got what they're also telling you, the subjective info. But we can also understand the patient's situation a little bit more by uh, running some diagnostics on them. Easiest one to do is the dipstick or the urinalysis on them. So you take their couple ways to do it. You can actually take a, um, a little stick that has little pieces of paper and they're all measuring different things on the, the different dipstick, on the dipstick. You have to take the stick, you dip it in the urine, and when you pull it out, you usually set the timer for like three minutes and that's whenever you take the reading. So the urine has time to change the color of the paper. And as you see in the picture there, you hold it up to the bottle and you can see uh, what we call a macroscopic look at what's in the urine. So do I have presence of white blood cells? Yes or no? Is there a lot or a little? It doesn't tell you how many, but it'll just say like three plus, which would be a lot. Uh, do we have glucose in the urine? A lot or a little? And it will actually, you know, you just match up the colors. It's not too challenging, but you got to be fast at this because um, the longer you take to read it, the more the colors fade into something different. So it's kind of a imprecise way, but a good estimate to see what's going on um, with the kidneys uh, because you tested the urine. Um, you also need really good lighting uh, to be able to see this, uh, you know, see the reagent develop. So that's kind of a downside. There is something called um, spectrom spectrometry. That's used less often, but that's using uh, light going through the urine and it can tell you if you, um, you know, it will tell you the same thing like a urinalysis, I believe, uh, when it comes to specific gravity, actually, spectrometry. But it's not as commonly used because the dipsticks, you know, kind of gets the job done. And um, it's a little bit faster and cheaper. Let's see, specific gravity. This, uh, to really explain specific gravity, I think of how many solutes are in the urine. If there is, like it's, there's a lot of solutes, there's, um, you know, it's kind of thick, for lack of better words, if it's thicker, then your specific gravity will actually go high. Um, if it's greater than 1.030, there is a trailing zero here in this situation, okay? We're not doing medications, it's just how this, you know, number is reported. But if it's greater than 1030, uh, we say that the person is actually dehydrated because the uh, urine is really amber, it's thicker, it's got more solutes in there, so the specific gravity is higher, we say. The only way I could remember this is I tell myself if I haven't peed by 1030, then my urine is going to, you know, have high specific gravity. It's going to be more concentrated. But normal is like 1.005 to 1.010, so 10, yeah. All right. Don't really need to remember those numbers uh, for this test, but uh, it will help you in PCT too. All right. Um, pilogram. Uh, you can either check out the kidneys and see how they're filtering things, either by giving somebody direct push of IV contrast. You must know if the person is allergic to shellfish. This is a problem if they are allergic to shellfish or iodine, and sometimes even betadine. It could be they could be that sensitive. Betadine is a pretty distant cousin, but of uh, the iodine families, in terms of reaction, uh, how severe is the reaction will determine if you are going to do the study or not. They can actually give you a couple of medications to desensitize you. But more than not, if you have a pretty bad reaction, the doctor's just going to avoid uh, a contrast dye study. So you can do IV dye, put into your veins. It, uh, the CT machine will circulate and or it will take pictures as the dye is circulating through your kidneys so you really get a good look at your kidneys. Or you can actually do a retrograde or direct pilogram. This is where you will actually put in a catheter of the urethra up into the kidneys and you'll shoot dye that way. 
um, and we'll see how it looks. Sound good? Sound good. I believe you do need a consent for this procedure. It's a little, uh, at least the retrograde, because it's a little bit more invasive, not so much the CT one. Ultrasound is also a great way to look at the kidneys. You can see obstructions. You can see if there's hydronephrosis, or water on the kidneys. You can also see, um, you know, just some gross abnormalities. Like if there's a tumor in there, it'll be more dense or less dense, or if there's cyst. So ultrasounds are really good too. If you're really wanting to figure out what's going on with a kidney tissue, um, you know, you can biopsy it. That's you know, usually done under CT guidance, not in surgery. It's a minor thing, minor surgery. Okay. I think that's it for our common urinalysis studies. Um, it would be of benefit to you to review your clinical insights to see, um, you know, is glucose normally present in the urine? No. Is protein normally present in the urine? No. How about urobilirubin? Maybe, and it tells you about the liver disease, you know, if somebody has substantial liver disease, just little things like that. So I would glance over your urinalysis, okay? I'm not asking you to be doctors and diagnose a patient. I'm just saying know what they mean. All right, slide 26. There is a 24-hour urine collection in process for a client. The nurse assistive personnel inadvertently duh, <laughs> empties one specimen into the toilet instead of the collection hat. The nurse should Continue with the collection of urine until the 24 hour period is finished. Make a note to the lab to inform them that one specimen was missed during the collection. C, begin filling a new collection container and take both containers to the lab at the end of the collection period. Or D, dispose of the urine already collected and begin an entirely new 24 hour collection. Think carefully. Answer is D. That is correct thing to do. Dispose of the urine already collected and begin an entirely new 24-hour collection. Very important to do it all over again. All right. Slide 27. A nurse is caring for a patient who had an indwelling catheter removed six hours ago. The patient has not voided. What is the nurse's best action? Call the provider to recap, assess the bladder for distension, reassure the patient that this is normal, document the findings and reassess. Well, the first thing you need to do is assess. Uh, and that would be assess the bladder for distension. The reason we are not calling the provider to recap at this time because what if the patient hasn't been drinking very much for the last few hours and it's not a matter that they couldn't pee, it's just they don't have any urine in there to pee. So that's very much the case. But uh, yep, I know this is not normal so don't reassure the patient that and um, we wouldn't just document these findings because they are out abnormal. Alright, I believe I have uh, kind of gotten the main points out there, at least I hope I have. Um, so remember, if it goes in, it must go out. Privacy, please. Got a urinary tract infection? Give them the antibiotics. Kill all the bugs. Um, that's Lysol. <laughs> please don't use this on the perineum area. What else do you need to remember? Let me think on this for two seconds. 